Hello amazing hackers, hope you're doing well today. I'd like to go over this tool called Neurolegion. Now, first of all, you don't need a credit card to sign up, but that's important to know. Uh, you can do that, you can have full access, you can buy stuff in here, but you can also just try it if you'd like. Now, the thing with Neurolegion is that it's a vulnerability scanner, web, mobile, and API. Now, what can you scan, for example, their website, Broken Crystals. Now, Broken Crystals is a modern, vulnerable web application from the creators of Neurolegion. Pretty freaking awesome. I'd go have a look because their vulnerable web application is very outdated. Now, this is much more modern. But besides that, you can see that we can do a lot of scans in here. Now, I'm going to create a new scan because I'm going to go over the options. And I'm going to give it a name, test, and of course, I'm going to put it in a project now i can make different projects when i'm working on for example a bug bounty project versus a pen testing project i can make the name of the client blah 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 you know uh, very useful now then i can also include scan templates also very useful for example api scan os top 10 uh, mitra top 25 2019 to 2020 light scan passive and deep um, maybe go for the OWASP Top 10 2017. Uh, I think they're working on the 2021 version, uh, but feel free to, to ask them, of course. And then you can schedule a single scan or a recurring scan as well. If you'd like to repeat this scan because you're in a uh, two-week release cycle and you'd like to repeat the scan every two weeks, that's definitely possible. Maybe a nightly scan for your uh, code that is being developed. Uh, really, you can customize that. I like that, of course, basic options, but they have it very good. Then we have the attack surface discovery. And by the way, full disclosure, I am not being paid by these guys to do this. Um, attack surface discovery, really useful because they can do that via crawling. But we all know as well that we can export HAR files from here, from our developer console. And those HAR files can be used as well. That's a session recording. Or we can even include an API scheme if we like. Now, I'm going to set it to crawler for now, but I know that I can do it via crawler and HAR file. If I set to API scheme, I can't pick the others. That's normal, of course. Uh, and then for the repeater, what is a repeater? Well, basically, sometimes they have domains that they are allowed to scan. Those are the allowed domains. You'll see that in here as well. For example, if I do google.com and I do the right thing, of course, they are unauthorized to scan that. So what does that mean? That I need, I am responsible for scanning that. I am the person that resp that's responsible. So I have to set up my own repeater through which they can run their tests. Because I, of course, am the one that is allowed to test this or not. They don't have that responsibility. That's me. So what can I do then? I can choose a repeater. Now I have, uh, what they have done so gracefully is... They have included expert.com for me in these allowed scans. So did this one is authorized, but know that I can add multiple targets at the same time. Uh, I can choose my repeater and if it's unauthorized, I have to run it through a repeater. Then I can exclude certain things as well. That's also very important. You're out of scope. You need that. And your attack surface optimization, this is just a little bit what exactly do I want to scan for? URL paths, headers, artificial URL queries, artificial URL fragments, all of these things, you can set them up. It will be a lot, a lot deeper, but it will also take longer, of course. And then if you want to, you can have a host placeholder and you can say how many concurrent requests can be done. That is very, very useful in my opinion. Then for the tests, you can choose between the, the dust, that's the dynamic uh, analysis tool. So what that means is it's going to run your application. And this is what it's going to test for. Now, this comes from that template that we set before. Of course, we can customize this to our liking and then we can save that. These tests are in beta. So that means that they might return false positives or they might not scan certain things that you might need them to scan. 
but very useful tool. Mass assignment, date manipulation, business constraint bypass, ID enumeration. Wow, just wow, my friend. This is unbelievable. I love this. I hope that when it comes out of beta soon, this will be incredible. Um, it already is. And then we have third party tests as well, such as JavaScript vulnerabilities, which you can also include, of course. Then in our app settings, we can choose authentication. So we can set up additional headers. If, for example, I require a specific header, I can set it up right here. And then for the WebSocket handling settings, that's also possible. Guys, I can't tell you how major this is. WebSockets are something that is still rising a bit. Uh, if you think about it, Burp Tweet hasn't had WebSockets for that long. WebSocket editors, it's still not the same as their normal HTTP requests. And it will never be because of WebSocket, you open your connection and then you send your packet uh, back and forth. Uh, so it's different, but it's definitely included. Now, this is the advanced scanning. Of course, I can set it to basic as well, but I would highly recommend that you set up that authentication because that is going to give you a much deeper scan. Now, where do you set up your authentication? That is literally in your authentication tab, of course. And in here, I can give it a name a description if I'd like, and I can set up a repeater. I can give it the HTTP protocol with a validation URL. This shows this is an active endpoint, different from the authentication URL to validate that the regular calls are working and that the re-authentication scenario is detected correctly. What does that mean? A call where you are logged in to check if you are logged in. Then you can add those headers that we were talking about and a specific body as well with a number of redirects. Sometimes after you log in, you get automatically redirected and you want to be able to catch that, but you don't want to get infinite redirects either. So you can set that up in here and you can change the redirect method to get as well if that needed. And then for the setup, you can pick which kind of authentication you'd like. So you can even set browser based form authentication, which means that you can literally tell it, fill in these data, this username, this password right here. Very, very useful. And then we have header authentication as well. That's something that I use a lot. Open ID connect, custom API authentication flow. This is freaking awesome. This is literally a flow that you can set up. I don't see many other tools that have this. And TLM authentication and then API and form authentication. API is the same as the custom API authentication flow. And we have browser-based form authentication for the form authentication. I don't know why it's still on the list. Doesn't really matter. And then we can have logout indicators as well. In here, we can trigger the authentication flow when the following response is detected. So that means that if I get a, I am unauthenticated 403 or 401, then I have to log in again. But of course, I can set up any other thing that I need from here. Like for example, if my website returns a 400, then I can set up that status code as well. I can detect using the response header pattern as well, or the body pattern. Uh, but for now, this is basically how you set up your authentications. Super useful. Then for your repeaters, there's a really useful guide on how to create a repeater. Uh, you can really easily set it up. It's not difficult at all. You need the identifiers from here. Feel free to use these because I don't use them anymore. Um, no, they're not online either, so you can't really use them. But that's what you need. And then, of course, you have project as well as we talked about before which groups all of your scans and which you can easily say my project has these types of vulnerabilities this brings me to the reporting side i love this so you have your project issues you can click here the status is recurring that means that we have seen it a few times you can set a status you can change the severity you can set an assignee who needs to look at this so that means indeed that you can invite your entire team for this tool you can literally copy the url very useful and then of course in here we have results from our latest five scans which we can also click through on now in here some very useful things we have 
repeater so we have a history id so this is a filter for the scans you can directly filter it then we have a pdf full report you can literally generate your full report send it over to your peers if you need to usually you adapt this a little bit but i think this report is pretty complete and pretty good in my opinion now again automation needs a manual tester as well but let's have a look at this report real quick because i think it's beautiful so once you open the report of course we'll have a table of contents with a methodology being used guys this documentation is on point Mwah. compliance results for OWASP vulnerability summary discovered vulnerability types then we go deeper into them of course you can you can look into what they've discovered they describe it a big summary this is beautiful to show to your customer then you can scroll down a little bit and we find uh, if we look at it we can also find the payloads being used for example that is super super useful uh, and massive just massive report beautiful this is something that you want to send your clients of course this is something that they need to know um, and i'm a big fan that's all i can say so for that pdf report you can also have an executive summary let's generate that as well always important to be able to send this to an executive as well this is a lot shorter as you can see it says where it passed, where it failed, what the results were in much shorter details, of course, because we only have 25 pages in here. Uh, and here we have over 175. Wow, that's that's massive. But that's your executive summary. Then you also have scan detail reports and you can even customize it if you want. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Now on to the next one, um, this is the JSON file for the scan, then we can also have the zipped JSON file. Uh, we have a CSV file, we can, if we click here, we can restart the same test, very useful as well. And we can delete those results, that's not something you'll often want to do, and you can give each user rights separately. As for the issues, you can of course click through on them, you can see what the problem is, you can read a little bit about it. And then you can have an overview, you can filter a little bit if you'd like. Then you can also only show the unresolved issues, the progress of the scan, some notifications from the engine, this is just some logging files. Then we have entry points that have been found and been tested, a full sitemap, which is also super useful if you'd like to do some manual testing, um, a summary of the network results that have been found, like 403 has been hit four times for a 445, blah, blah, blah. Maybe a bit useful, but not something that I often use in technology tech if they can find it the engine log so this is the log file and then some comments we can put in here as well unfortunately not vulnerable to cross-site scripting or sql injection i've tried maybe you can find it feel free to try but do report it and be ethical about it then we have some storage as well for some of those reports for example we can find them in here or if we need a certain file Accounting and billing or information, organizational information, also very useful, and the activity log. I think that's about what I wanted to say from this tool. Again, I'm not being paid or sponsored by these people. They've given me an account to, to give it a little shot, to give it a try. Um, that is something that I do have to disclose. But... I've given you my completely honest opinion about this. So what is my result? What is my summary about this tool? I like it. I like it a lot. I like that you can test so deeply, so thoroughly, that you can set your authentication so easily. And this tool, definitely recommend it for a pen test especially. Just do this because you can guarantee compliance very easily without having to do much manual work. But, again, but for every pen test, I do think manual work is required 
to verify other exploratory testing. So that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this little summary of Neuralegion again. Go visit brokencrystals.com as well. That's an amazing vulnerable website where you can test your skills on a little bit. So feel free to hack away at it. Feel free to test your skills on this amazing website and feel free to test Neuralegion itself as well, of course. Uh, this tool has a free option. Again, covers web, mobile and API. You can log in with Google, you can log in with GitHub. You can create an account as well. It doesn't really matter, whichever you prefer. And you can, again, invite your team to play around with this as well. Just have a look and maybe it's something you'd be interested in. For bug bounty hunting, it depends. It really depends. I don't believe automatic scanners will bring you much luck in bug bounty hunting. That's just my opinion. Everybody has their own opinion about this, but automated scanners like these will probably not bring you much in bug bounty hunting. That being said, just like with any tool, there have been bug bounty hunters that have found vulnerabilities with tools like this. So make of that what you will. Give it a shot. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you later, my friend. Bye, amazing hacker. I love you. Bye bye.